How are you? I'm really good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's funny. I know I've met you and, and spoken to you, but I feel sort of excited because the Mavises were a huge part of the Australian landscape at one stage in the late nineties. Yeah, well, we had a gradual kind of slope to you know, a career, really. It was like we kind of started very young, so it's a gradual thing that, yeah, it was a pinnacle in the, around 98, I guess. Well, so if it was like a steady pace uphill rather than an overnight sensation, how did it feel when you actually started achieving that success and seeing your videos on TV and things like that? Uh, it, was, it was like a, a, a mixed kind of thing because it was, yeah, it was like a, we always uh, a built kind of cult following and stuff in the pubs all around Australia. So, but when, when video clips are on in public places that you're in, it's a little bit disconcerting, but yeah, because you're not kind of prepared for it. So it's just a bit embarrassing, really. But. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how you feel, but uh, I imagine that Becky actually didn't quite feel that way because I do remember I used to see her around town a lot in St Kilda and that, and she... She always stood out of the crowd. <laughs> yeah, Bex, Bex kind of lives in her own... She doesn't really notice. She's, like, doing her own thing, and um, she's just like a ray of sunshine. Really. She just powers on through her life. <laughs> whereas whereas I'm more the moody one that sort of runs and hides and stuff. <laughs> so you made a good team. Yeah. We made a good team. It was like the light and dark kind of thing, the Scorpio and the Aries. Yeah. Well, I, I know you and... Becky have done a couple of small shows in Ballarat together, but how long has it been since the whole band has actually been together and played like you're about to do? Well, it's probably been since our last gig, which would have been was either 2000, I think it was 2001, so yeah, like 14 years or so. Wow. It's actually the three original members are playing, Becky, myself and Nick on guitar. Becky and Nick both live overseas in different parts of America but Andrea is not joining us this time she's got kids little two little girls and Josh is not joining us this time he's really not doing music at the moment so we've got some new members which is really exciting oh and the other two are still over in America at the moment yeah so have you been rehearsing at all or is that not possible yet they're still there, yeah. So I've just started rehearsing with the drummer, just myself, and Ming, who's our drummer, Mingo Star. <laughs> so we've just done two rehearsals, just to, I just came back from one then. So it's, yeah, it's been great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Becky and Nick, I guess that this plan was to come home for Christmas. Yeah. Well, it started like as a little acoustic thing. We thought, oh, maybe because we're all here, maybe we should get together. And it was just going to be in our lounge room, just have, have you know, sing along, fun, catch up. Then we thought we'll book a venue. And then we thought, oh, we should have a bass player. And we knew the other two weren't up for it at the moment because we were going to do something a couple of years ago. So Matt Sigley's going to play bass, who's from the Earthmen, who we toured with in the late 90s, and who I'm in a band with at the moment called Video Video. So Matt's doing bass, and we've got Jess on keys, and we've got Ming on drums. So, but we haven't all got together yet. It's just me and Ming at the moment because it's kind of like everyone's free at different times. So we're going to sort of slowly add everyone in. And then Nick and Becky are going to be here for like a couple of maybe one rehearsal or something. Mm. All of us. So who's choosing the songs? Because you, you had four albums out and you had a heap of singles. So Yeah, well, we just did it like in about five minutes via – we have like a little uh, private chat between myself and Nick and Beck on – Facebook, so we just did like a real time. Let's write the set list sort of thing, and we all pretty much agreed on stuff. So we just went boom, 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 boom. No, yep, no, yep. Few tweaks, and we did it. Do you all have a favourite track still? We all have sort of similar favourites. We all like Snow White Line. We all like Does It Matter. We all like Drive. Yeah, and other, there was so many other ones I off. Like songs of Venus returning as well. There's so many ones we wanted to do, but we just can't fit them all in at this point. So I don't think that one of those songs you mentioned was actually a single release. They were all album songs. Yeah. Well, we're going to do obviously the singles, most of the singles, I think. But a couple of the ones I mentioned are ones we wanted to be singles, but due to record company politics and stuff, that didn't end up being. I suppose not being a musician myself, it's a totally different perspective from listening to a song as it is to being able to actually play it so you get your favourites from the inside. Yeah, like um, some of this, there's a single called Happiness, for instance, which we are going to play on the night, but we felt it was a good song nestled in the album. It was very poppy and kind of light and 
that sort of fit in the album well, but they wanted to release that as a single, which we felt was a bit too kind of poppy as a single, a bit too twee by itself, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Uh, Naughty Boy is actually my favourite song of yours. Yeah, that's, that's fun. A little bit of edge in there. <laughs> and the film clip's still... I mean, actually, that song hasn't aged. I've been... I play Cry sometimes, but I've been playing Naughty Boy a bit lately, and it, it just... It's timeless. That's great. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that video clip was one of the ones that we we liked. That was kind of our thing. Let's just go into the toilets and be stupid. Yeah, was that in a nightclub, or where was that film, those toilets? Yeah, that was in a night. I can't remember which nightclub it was. It was somewhere in the casino, and the casino is new during the day. But, yeah, there's a bit where I'm in drag, which I remember someone from a record company walking in as we were shooting it and freaking out a bit. <laughs> At my outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Did you sort of get yourself submerged in character? I didn't really think about it. It was kind of like a reference to John Waters' films and stuff, you know, Female Trouble and all those films that we, <laughs> we grew up on. <laughs> just kind of kind of anti-drag as well, but also anti-rock pig and just, I don't know, being an annoying boy. So it didn't bring out the bitch in you? Maybe it did. <laughs> <laughs> With this reunion, I mean, is there any talk at all of maybe even just another single out of the Mavises, or is there some, like, unreleased tracks that you could add a couple of new tracks to and release a new album or something at some stage? Yeah, well, we actually did do a very under the radar. Um, we did do a um, Kids in the Basement Volume 1, which is on iTunes, with, like, some really early stuff from when we were... 14, 15, 16 to 20 kind of year old. But there's a, a whole backlog of, of stuff, yeah, demos that sort of, of songs that we were going to record for albums that didn't make it and stuff. So we might do that, but we are also talking about the three of us sort of throwing around the idea of possibly doing another album. So I don't know whether everyone will be involved or not. I can discuss it with everyone, but yeah. But three out of five makes it the Mavis is still. Well, we were the songwriters in the band, the three of us, 80% songwriters anyway, the other two did rewrite as well. I don't know, we discussed it with the other two as well before we went ahead, but um, it's something we'd like to do, but we'll see. We've got other projects going on as well. Yeah, well, you did mention you're doing video video. What about Becky and Nick? Are they in other bands over in America or soloing or...? Well, Beck's just doing a new project called The Fascinated with another guy in LA. So she's almost finished an album, I think. She's, uh, she put an, a, a song up on YouTube, so a little teaser, last week. So I'm not sure what Nick's doing. He just bought a new guitar. So I think there's going to be music from Nick soon. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, the the reunion show is happening on the 27th of December yeah. at the John Curtin Band Room. It's a great venue, yeah. And don't have an actual website at the moment, but you are still on Facebook and you are at facebook.com forward slash the Mavises and you do have your event on there. Yes, yeah, and we're pretty interactive on Facebook as well. I mean, it started off as a kind of a, a memories kind of thing, but the last couple of years we've been pretty interactive on there and we respond and to people and, yeah. Yeah, well... You know, thinking about getting back on stage with the Mavises, I know it's only a one-off at this point, but, like, it is nostalgic for you, but it must be a different perspective on that now that, like, at the time you were caught up in it, now you can look back at it. And is it sort of a softer feeling you had for it or was it all fun when you were doing it? Yeah, well, it was a, quite a while. I mean, I, I don't listen to the Mavises. I don't sit and listen to it. But I have been listening a little bit just to hear the song, yeah, but I have a different feeling now to listen to it. I mean, some some of the songs are kind of have so many different memories attached to songs and moments, and some of them, the memories are ugly, <laughs> and some of them are amazing, and some both in the same song and stuff, you know. Yeah, but you kind of don't really listen to, like, listen to what you're doing at the moment, but I'm kind of listening to it from a, a fresh perspective at the moment and enjoying it and actually thinking, yeah, it sounds fresh. Yeah. And can I ask, like, you and Becky are brother and sister, so did you actually come from a musical family? Yeah, well, Dad actually used to play guitar in a band when he was a teenager. 
and then he met mum and he sold his guitar and bought a car, I think, to, to visit mum. She was in Torquay or Ballarat. I was born in Torquay or Toulon. But yeah, he, he sort of gave up music when he met mum. But he's still musical and he's actually bought a guitar, a few guitars recently, so he's doing music at home. And mum's like very passionate about music as well. So yeah, I guess they, they're always playing records at home. I grew up on Beatles and Fleetwood Mac and always music playing in the house, so yeah. So you were born in Geelong, but you grew up in Ballarat? Yeah. And all five of the original members from Ballarat? I think everyone else is from Ballarat. I think I'm the only one that could be wrong. I, Josh was in Queensland. He may have, not sure. But yeah, I'm from Chrissy Amphlet territory. <laughs> I actually was born in Adelaide, but I moved to Geelong at 10 months old and I grew up in Geelong. All right, okay. Yeah. I Actually, I'm looking at your Facebook event, which is called the Mavis's Electric Reunion. And I guess it's that because you have had a couple of small acoustic reunions, at least you and, and Becky. Yeah, because well, it, it started off the event was semi-electric and then we changed it to electric when we decided to have bass and drums and keys and the whole shebang. So that was the semi-electric was because I was probably going to play acoustic and Nick was going to play electric and we were just going to do lo-fi at the start. But yeah, so we just changed it to electric. Is there something you would like to say to, of course, your fan base that you built up while you were around, but also people who may be younger and actually missed you and might want to come? Yeah, it'd be great to have people that didn't get to see us. I mean, it's hard to say how we have a lot of really a spectrum of, of age of fans, but yeah, it'd be great for people that hadn't heard any of those songs live to come along because it's going to be fun playing them, actually. I'm actually trying to, um, I was in rehearsal today because I kind of, you know, you, your voice changes over the years. So I kind of sung in a different way back then. So it's weird that your voice kind of reverts into a different way of singing as well. You get a deeper voice as you get older. Yeah, I actually enjoy singing in a deeper voice. I actually just noticed you've got uh, Caroline Kennedy from her new project, Caroline Name. She was from Dead Star supporting you on this night too. Yes, Caroline and Ian. It's drums and Caroline's playing guitar and singing and they're beautiful. I went to a show at her residency recently and beautiful songs. Caroline's voice is like pristine and, yeah, highly recommended. Yeah. What can people expect to see? Like you guys have probably got like 14 years of energy that's going to really get unleashed that night, haven't you? Yeah, we're going to do a spectrum of stuff from, I'll say, from approximately 1994 to 2000, I guess, yeah, song-wise. And I guess they'll get the excitement of us three seeing each other as well because we're, we're like family and we just have so much history, Nick and I and obviously Beck and I. So it'll, it'll be something electric, so maybe that is inappropriate. Thing. Other members that are playing with us are amazing and it's going to be exciting to play with them too. I mean, I've been rehearsing with Ming and he's great. He's a great guy. I've made a new friend as well. Like, I think I've made a new bestie out of all this, so that's great. <laughs> Found a new music project. <laughs> I've already been tick, tick, ticking away. Yeah. <laughs> that's what the creative mind does. It can't help itself. Always ticking away. Yeah. You've been doing video video for a few years yourself now, haven't you? It was a different name at one stage. Well, I had the Blow Waves, which were together for uh, since around 2005 to, to 2012. And then during around 2011, Brian from the Blow Waves and I started video video as a side project. It's like electronic synth pop thing. So we had a, a Sony deal in Greece when we released a single and we had a bit of a semi-hit over there. And then we sort of put that on hold and continued with the blowers. But so we sort of blowers disbanded. So we're picking up this video video again and doing, we started doing, when I was in Ballarat, a few little gigs and stuff. But then we recorded the album properly and we met Matt Sigley, came on board as a third member and he sort of con- finished the album with us. He came around the 60% mark and he's like an amazing songwriter and singer and everything. So we added a couple of songs of his in, co-writes, and yeah, that's kind of been the full-time thing. So that album's going to come out probably early 2015. Does it ever get confusing that you're working on video, video songs one minute and then turning around and doing the Mavises the next? Uh, it has been the last couple of weeks, yeah. Video, video album's being mastered at the moment. 
and so they email him back and forth for that and then all of a sudden it's and sort of to work out rehearsals for that and then Mavis's as well and that's going to be playing with the Mavis's <laughs> from video videos it's all crossing over it's you know it's confusing, but it's fun. It's fun confusion. Actually, that, that just occurred to me what you said before about not listening to the Mavis's music and that, which a lot of bands don't listen to their own music. But you know what I'd like to see Video Video do, because I don't know of any bands that have done this. I think it would be great for Video Video to cover a Mavis's song. Well, it has crossed my mind, actually. Yeah, you never know. No one would do it better than you. I'd love to hear someone cover one of our songs. Yeah, but I don't know if anyone has. No, we'll put that out there. Someone go and cover a Mavis's track. Yeah, I've heard of people doing it live, um, cry and stuff, but um, yeah, I'd like someone to record something. Actually, you've got a lot more videos up on YouTube than I realised. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a Matt Doll account on, on YouTube. It's got a variety of things on there. All right. Some solo stuff. Oh, do you, oh yeah, Matt Doll Music on Facebook. Yeah, I actually did that in Ballarat as well when I was there recently. I've been back in Melbourne in about four months, four or five months. So the album sitting there, I did it all myself. I programmed and I played everything on it, guitars, bass guitar, synths. It's got drum machines and stuff on it. It's sort of, it's very, sounds very me. It's very, almost like when I was doing like 12 years old with my drum machine and, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 at home. It's got that vibe about it, but it's like a little bit electro, but also got that, it's not over, overly programmed or anything. So I'm excited about that, but I've got to, my mate Cal's going to help me mix that one. So hopefully after video, video I'll release that. With the live shows, uh, are you going to be doing them solo or are you going to have to get a few musicians up there with you to help out? Well, I've got this, my Roland drum pad, which is my upgrade from my, from Julie, my little RX. Yamaha drum machine I used to do solo shows with. So I might start off doing, yeah, sort of drum machine guitar, electric guitar and vocals, but I might add some members on, see how I go. Yeah, not sure yet. Has the new one got a name? Well, the solo thing's going to be called Matt Doll. No, I mean, you just said your old one was called Julie. Ah, oh, Frida. Frida. <laughs> Where do these names come from? Do you just look at them and know what their name is? Yes. Well, actually, Byron helps me with that one. Because, like, what am I going to call her? Because I've got Julie, I had since I was about 14. Then I've got Cindy, uh, another drum machine, and now Frida. <laughs> You're going to be able to start your own girl band of drum machines, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite memory from your time in the Mavises? Probably... After gigs, we were touring like late at night in the Tarago <laughs> on the highway, I think, with the band, just playing our mixed tapes and laughing and singing and drinking. You know, yeah, little family on the road. I, I think that's probably my best memory. What would you tell 14 year old Matt if you could have a chat with him now? Don't worry so much, don't frown so much, and live in the moment. And are you learning to do that more now? Definitely. Actually, my 14-year-old wasn't like that. But, you know, through my 20s, maybe a bit of a, bit of a warrior. Well, I hope I can pass them to my nephews because they're the age. <laughs> One of my nephews is playing, starting to pick up the drums. Oh, well, he's actually picked up the drums. He's great. That'll be great because, I mean, you know, at least I think you guys sound like you've got a reasonably good perspective on the industry and that because you've had a really good time. You, you had the troubles and... That, that a lot of bands get, but it doesn't sound like that defined the Mavis's career so much. No, yeah. But we had the whole spectrum, I think, that we were lucky enough to actually, you know, get to a, a wider audience, but like in the smallest spectrum we did, and especially in Australia, but yeah, I think nothing really strange happened to us that, any, that didn't happen to other bands as well. Probably helped that you were such a solid little family unit to get through anything that did come along. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how we. It was all pretty much about songs for us. Like we, you know, from the appearances of of videos and and photos and all that. You know, it might seem like we're into our hair or something like that. But we're seriously all song freaks. It was just all about the songs. And it's going to be an exciting night, twenty seventh of December. All about hair. <laughs> 
It's going to be all about colour in here. <laughs> You're a very colourful band. <laughs> and sparkles. <laughs> <laughs> At the John Curtin Band Room, and it's going to go off. It is a one-off show. And you guys, I suppose you're going to have a big family Christmas before this too, so you all will be probably really happy. Yeah, fat and happy. <laughs> so, yeah, there's no releases out at the moment, but will you have the any of the old albums or anything available at the show for people to purchase? We're going to have a sift through and see what we've got, but I don't think there will be any of the major albums because we don't own those albums like the masters of the albums. We do, actually, we do with Poseidon, but we don't have, like that was the EP, like I think it was six track. It was before Venus Returning, but um, we're going to have to sift through and see if we can find some like rarities, things, just to have some fun. And people will be able to actually bring their old Mavis's albums and get them signed. Of course, yes. It really was really nice of you to agree to have a chat with me, and I'm definitely going to get to this show. Please do. Is there still tickets available? Like There is. A, the tickets are selling fast, and I don't want to have anyone miss out. So anyone out there who's listening, go and pre-book a ticket. The ticket price is not high at all. We've, we're not doing it to make money. We're doing it to have fun and um, just connect with people and connect with the songs. and. Say hi. So, yeah, and the event is, of course, called the Mavis's Electric Reunion, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of sparks flying that night. On Facebook, you are just facebook.com forward slash the Mavises. Yes, no apostrophe. Sorry, people that like to hate the apostrophe. <laughs> it's not going, it's too late, and it's meant to be there because it's punk. <laughs> yeah. And you, Matt Dole, people can find your page at facebook.com forward slash the Matt Dole. Yes. And Video Video Band is your band. Yeah. Yeah, if they go to the Mavises on Facebook, they can find links to the event to 27th of December. Great. See you all there. And the invitation to come down and, and take over the studio one night is always open or just pop down for half an hour or so? Definitely. I'd love to, yeah. I really hope that you guys have an absolute blast at the John Curtin Band Room on the 27th of December and I will I will get down there to see you. Thank you so much, Kat. It's been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure and thank you very much for your time and we're definitely going to be chatting again in the future. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Have a good night. Thanks a lot. You too.